Our eighth and final day touring the Florida Nature Coast brings us to Tarpon Springs, Florida, the sponge capital of the world. With over 20 Greek restaurants, over 100 Greek-owned businesses, and the highest percentage of Greek Americans of any city in the U.S., a trip to Tarpon Springs may have you feeling like you traveled to Greece instead of Florida. But is Tarpon Springs the right vacation destination for you? In this video, we hope to help you figure that out. So join us on our tour where we'll show you some of the best places to shop, eat, and drink, and we'll explain why there are literally sponges and soaps everywhere. We'll also bring you along on an educational tour to nearby Anklo Key, a beautiful secluded island. And stay tuned to the end to see where we wrapped up our tour of the nature coast with some authentic Greek cuisine. Those who arrive at Tarpon Springs before 10 a.m. may be surprised to find the place to be nearly empty. But fortunately, this means you'll have your choice of parking, which we were happy to find cost only $5 for the entire day. Today we're exploring Tarpon Springs. We're starting off with a Greek coffee and a boat tour from the sponge docks. We're not sure where the day will take us after that, but we're definitely going to get some Greek food. So here's downtown Tarpon Springs, but we are up by the sponge docks. And this is where we're going to take a boat out to an island. We quickly purchased tickets for the first tour to Anclo Key. Got our ticket! Which would be departing at 10.30 in the morning. And after checking out one of the nearby souvenir shops, we made our way over to the Halas Bakery in search of delicious Greek coffee. We arrived just as the bakery was opening and were quickly amazed with what we found inside. Feeling adventurous, we ordered three items that we'd never tried before. An iced Freddo coffee, a hot Greek style coffee, and a Greek style dessert known as katefi. I love the sweet and foamy Freddo, while Skylar enjoyed the small but intense hot coffee. And we both loved the sweet honey flavor of the katefi which we had no problem finishing before rushing off to catch our 10.30 tour. We made it back to the dock just as our Odyssey tour was boarding, and we soon found ourselves floating down the Anclote River. While we only spotted a couple dolphins on the way to Anclote Key, we found the ride to be relaxing and enjoyable. Passengers on the Odyssey tour may be surprised to find how educational it is, as you'll learn about all the millions of sponges in the area and the waters that they live in. Before you know it, you'll arrive at the island where you'll be provided with buckets for shell gathering as you exit the boat. And once on the island, you'll be greeted with a seemingly endless amount of white sandy beach, which we were excited to explore, even though we only had around 30 minutes. Skyler was quick to venture out into the water in efforts to fill our shell bucket. We were surprised to find how shallow the water was on the island, which made it really easy to find several nice shells. But our half hour on this beautiful beach passed way too fast as we grabbed our shells and made our way back towards the boat. Once back on board, we said goodbye to Anclote Key and enjoyed a few cold drinks while we made our way back to the docks. Hey guys, we just got done with our Odyssey boat cruise and for around $19 per adult, we would say it's definitely worth it. Yeah, we only saw a couple of dolphins on the cruise, but we've been seeing dolphins all week, so we were fine with that. We really enjoyed the naturalist. She had a ton of good information 
about Tarpon Springs and the surrounding area. Yeah, she taught us about harvesting sea sponges and also the history of the area and also Ancelot Island. And I would also like to point out that the drinks on the boat were really reasonably priced and I took full advantage of that. And here's a tip, if you purchase the drink tickets before you get on the cruise, they're even cheaper. And as far as the island itself, even though we only had a half hour there, we really enjoyed the soft sandy beaches, the shelling, and the water was really shallow and great for swimming. Overall, if you're visiting Tarpon Springs and at all interested in the history or learning about harvesting sea sponges, we would highly recommend taking this boat tour. But now it is afternoon and we are starving, so we're gonna go find some food. Back on land, we walked down the docks on the way to our lunch spot, where we both really enjoyed checking out the sponge diving boats, along with the various artwork and statues, which have been inspired by the local sponging industry. If you plan to dine while at the sponge docks, most people will recommend either Greek food or seafood. We decided to do both, starting with a seafood lunch at Rusty Belly's. We ordered bowls of the homemade seafood gumbo and crab bisque, two fresh catch tacos, and a local beer. The beer came out quick along with a bag of hush puppies, which were an unexpected but delicious surprise. The gumbo and bisque came shortly after and both were loaded with seafood. And the tacos were not to be outdone as the fresh amberjack was exceptional. So when talking to people about our trip to Tarpon Springs, we kept receiving the same recommendations, halas for Greek food and rusty belly for seafood. Now we just left the rusty belly and we can confirm it absolutely lives up to the hype. We're hoping that halas lives up to the expectations as well. We'll be heading there later for dinner. After an amazing lunch, you might be ready to do some shopping. And if sponges and soaps are on your list, you'll be in the perfect place. We were amazed not only by the sheer amount of sponges, but also by the various shapes, sizes, and functions of the many different types of sponges. We also had a great time browsing through the hundreds of different types of soaps, each with their own unique scents, which fill the many soap and sponge shops that line the streets of the sponge docks. So we decided to check out some of the local shops here. And the first purchase was actually a new hat, which is very reasonable. I think it was under $10. And then we have got a sponge, which of course Tarpon Springs is known for. And before we went on our cruise today, we really knew nothing about harvesting sea sponges. So we learned that every sea sponge here will have a flat area. And that's because the divers will dive down and they will cut the sea sponge a few inches above the ground because that allows the sponges to regrow. Whereas if they went down and pulled them out with the roots, then they would not regrow. We purchased this particular sea sponge to use around our house for a few reasons. First, we learned that sea sponges can last up to two years if you care for them properly. We also learned that they're better for us and the environment. These are not treated with any chemicals, and also once you're done with them and you throw them away, they will decompose. And while we were shopping, we learned more about the sea sponge industry. When it first began in this area, the men would go out and harvest the sea sponges and the women would stay home and make the soaps. We purchased four different kinds of goat's milk soaps today. We got three different cupcakes, or they call them cupcakes, with the sponges on top and the soaps on the bottom. And we also got a bar of soap, all made from goat's milk. Lastly, we got some soap risers, and these will help our soaps last longer. And if you're not into shopping, you may still enjoy checking out some of the murals and learning about the history of the sponge docks like we did. We learned that Tarbon Springs sponge history began in the late 1800s, 
when huge sponge beds were discovered growing in the coastal waters. The discovery brought over 500 Greek sponge divers to Tarpon Springs in the early 1900s. The sponge industry became so big that it even eclipsed tourism and citrus farming in Florida for a 30-year period. The sponge industry in Tarpon Springs remains strong today, as does the Greek culture and influence. If you're ready for a break from the sponges and soaps, then Captain Jack's might be a great spot for you. Skylar actually found Captain Jack's earlier in the day while waiting for our cruise, which is literal proof that he can spot a tiki bar from a mile away. Ah, there's where we're going! Captain Jack's Tiki Bar! And after a quick half mile walk, we had arrived. Captain Jack's Tiki was hopping on this Saturday afternoon, but we had no problem grabbing a couple of beers and finding a spot to enjoy them with a view of the water. We're just leaving Captain Jack's and really enjoyed having a couple of cold drinks on the water. Now we're going to make the half mile walk back to the sponge docks to check out the rest of the area and grab dinner. We'll see you there. We arrived back at the sponge docks a couple of hours before our dinner reservation, and we had a couple of great places in mind to kill some time. The first was Five Branches Brewery. The sponge docks only brewery, which we were happy to find, had 15 beers on tap. And while we would have loved to have tried them all, we limited ourselves to just a few, of which the Blueberry Blonde and the Hazy IPA were our favorites. Our next stop was Mama's, where we had stopped to check out some authentic Greek music. And while Skylar was impressed with the Greek music, we can't say the same about the ouzo, a Greek liquor that Skylar drank for his first and likely also last time. Fortunately, the Greek beer went down much more smoothly. We were also able to catch a bit of the belly dancer show just before heading off for dinner. We arrived back at Halas for our dinner reservation and couldn't have been more excited to eat some authentic Greek food. We were quickly seated and I wasted no time in ordering myself another Freddo, the same amazing iced coffee drink that I had enjoyed earlier in the day. And we both truly enjoyed the ambiance as we awaited the arrival of our food. The first of which to arrive was the Saganaki, because how can you not order the flaming cheese? We both found the cheese to be perfectly burnt and delicious, and something we definitely order again. And last but not least came the Greek salad and the lamb gyro, both of which ranked up there with the best we'd ever had. So what do you think of the loss? Uh, overall, I'd say it lived up to expectations. The service was a little slow, but it's COVID, and this place is absolutely packed, so that was to be expected. But the food was delicious, the presentation was good, so overall, great experience. We will be back. Thanks so much for joining us on our day in Tarpon Springs. If you're interested in seeing more of our tour of the Nature Coast, be sure to watch it from the beginning in our Nature Coast playlist. To see more of our other Florida content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching! Yeah, the that's good though. Crazy. That's good though. It's not that crazy. It's, you can see knots in it. <laughs> that's good. People like knots. You can see knots in my hair. <laughs>